Hey there, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Today's video has to do about hand independence. Um, and particularly when you're playing something in the left hand, um, or maybe if you're playing it in the right hand and you want to kind of keep it going, like maybe an ostinato, so some kind of a repeated rhythmic pattern, but then you want to have some freedom to improvise with the other hand. So how do you manage to train yourself to split your brain in two in a certain way and do two different things in two different hands. And this can be using very simple um, rhythms. I'm gonna be demonstrating with some simple things um, as well as more complex rhythms. If you already own the book, uh, nope, other side. If you already own the book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano, you could follow along here actually on page 51. Uh, this is in one of the Jeremy's Tips sections of improvising over an ostinato. So um, I'm gonna use uh, actually the example from the book. simple ostinato in the left hand. The first thing that I really recommend that you do is that you find the places and practice improvising with the same rhythm in the left hand and the right hand. So what you could do is um, lock them up. metronome or sorry put on a timer as well as a metronome sure and um, do that for 10 minutes 15 minutes until you're just so bored of it um, as you get bored you might find yourself getting more creative but don't let yourself stray from that same rhythm maybe you're gonna do things that are more harmonically interesting solid to the point of boredom with that, then you can allow yourself to add in, as you hear them, some other notes. So still you're keeping that same framework. focus on where they line up, but I might just be skipping some or adding some more. And again, I would do that past the point of boredom, you know, take 20 minutes. And as I say, don't force it in, but allow yourself as you hear it to get a little bit looser with that relationship. By the way, the, with all of these exercises, it's really good to do them in both hands. So I could also get the ostinato going in my right hand. And now on my left hand, I'm going to improvise. between those two parts. Sometimes I think I really better focus in on that right hand part, which is now the ostinato, and sometimes 
my mind kind of gets interested in the left hand part and it is a little bit of a back and forth you can't really just focus in on one or you know you can't split your brain at least i can't and i think most of us can so that's one approach um to, to uh, getting started and let me show you with a more complicated ostinato i was working on this version of caravan where my i had this ostinato <laughs> So please excuse uh, if this doesn't go well. I started um, at you know playing the right hand and left hand simultaneously, improvising in the right um, and keeping the ostinato in the left. And if that's really hard for you, you might try an easier ostinato, but you also might try to write it out first. Write out ten different versions, uh, ten different measures against that ostinato, and practice it. Sometimes we just need to teach our body what it feels like to do this um, before kind of everything else catches up. So the other way to approach it, and by the way, I believe this is a both and, it's not an either or, is to practice doing things that go against the ostinato. And I like to practice um, kind of uh, standard rhythmic units and getting to all the different units. So let's come back to this. What if I just practice half notes? And before I try to improvise, I'm gonna do it as a scale. So I don't have to even think about the notes, I can just focus on the rhythm. I'm just going to play the C major scale. Beautiful. What if I do half notes starting on beat two? Can I do that? Triplets. 
tricky as if we did dotted quarter notes against this. Let's see if I can do it. preparing that piece uh, to perform it. Because what you want to do is, first of all, you want to be totally confident where your two hands are coming together and where they're not coming together. Um, and then second of all, you want to have the freedom to use and employ any rhythmic unit that you might imagine. And you want to train your brain to be able to hold two very different things in there at once. So again, kind of the two exercises, the two categories of exercises, one is to play simultaneously and then loosen from that sim simultaneity. And then the second is to choose strict rhythmic units and try every possible rhythmic unit. And the more rhythmic, rhythmic units you fool around with, the better your mastery is gonna be. You know, you, you do, excuse me, you do five tuplets, you do dotted quarter notes, you do half note triplets. Choose every possible rhythmic unit um, and you'll be able to play even the most complex ostinatos and improvise with some measure of freedom. So I hope that that helped. Um, as always, I uh, love it when people leave comments, when they like, when they subscribe, when they purchase uh, my book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano, which you can see right over here. And I'll leave a link in the comments for when, uh, where you can purchase that. Um, see you soon with more piano tips.